I'm Kristen Allen and I'm a Sydney-based cheesemaker and I'm here today in Vaucluse House Cellars making some wash-drying cheese. Alright, so I've got a big 10-litre bladder of milk here that hopefully I won't spill. I'm a bit of a professional at this. We're going to pour 10 litres of milk into the pot. We're heating the milk to 32 degrees and just stirring as we go. Switch off the heat once it gets to 32 degrees and we'll add in some kefir culture. There. So I'm using 120 uh, mils of the kefir. So I'll add that to the milk and then we'll stir for a few minutes and then we're going to leave the milk to ripen and let all the good bacteria that's found in the kefir start culturing the milk. And what happens is they feed on the lactose in the milk, which are the milk sugars, and they'll produce lactic acid, which starts the fermentation process. So what we're doing, this whole cheese making process today, um, to turn the milk into a curd and then into a cheese is we're actually changing uh, the pH level. Um, so we're souring the milk basically. So we start out with a pH level. I think milk's around 6.8. By the end of today, I reckon we'll get down to somewhere near uh, five. So we'll leave it for about somewhere between 45 minutes to an hour. Um, so it's quite cool down here, it being a cellar underground. Um, so I just want to keep the pot uh, as warm as possible. So we want to keep that as close to 32 degrees because uh, that's what the little bacteria like. So I'm just going to wrap it in this beautiful orange... <laughs> garden bin bag and then I've got a blankie here so we'll wrap it up in a blanket as well. Um, if it drops a little bit that's okay. Okay so it's been about 45 minutes. I'll just take the lid off. Ooh, delicious. And just see how the, the cream has really risen to the top of the milk. It's beautiful there. I'm just going to measure out about two mils of rennet. I'm going to dilute it in some cold water. And then I'm going to pour that into the milk. And then I'm going to stir for a few minutes just to mix it all in. So Rennet is an enzyme and traditionally it's, they use animal rennet which is found in the fourth stomach of a ruminant. So if you think a baby calf in the fourth stomach as the milk passes through the stomachs, when it hits the fourth stomach it curdles and makes it easier for the animal to digest. So once I finish stirring, uh, we're going to wrap it up again uh, and keep the milk nice and warm uh, and hopefully the milk will turn from this beautiful liquid gold uh, into a, a curd. So it'll look something, resemble something more like silken tofu, um, so a milky jelly. Stop the milk somehow as much as we can. I'll put the lid on and then you don't want to move that at all. So we're going to leave it for another 45 minutes. We'll, we'll start at 45 minutes. I'll come in and just check to see that the curd is formed. We'll do like a, a break. But because it's setting, you don't want to disturb that 
at all. You want to keep it nice and still. So no moving the pot around, otherwise the milk won't set properly. Um, and we want to keep it warm again. We don't want that temperature to drop because that may affect the setting time as well. Cover the pot and we'll leave it again for another 45 minutes roughly uh, until we get a clean break in that curd and the curd is, the milk is coagulated and turned into a curd. So it's been 45 minutes and I'm just going to test it to see if we've got a clean break. So I'm going to put my curd knife in all the way to the bottom, make a cut, flip to the knife and it should see that. Once we've achieved a clean break, we'll cut the curd into two centimetre pieces. So two centimetres apart all the way across. And then I'll go back horizontally. might just cut it in half down there as well just so that we're cutting the curd in half that way. I'm going to leave it for five to ten minutes and just let those surfaces that I've just cut just heal a bit. After that we'll start stirring the curd for around 30 minutes. So I'm going to start stirring the curds now um, I'm just going to gently start because they're still quite fragile. I'm just going to move these curds around the pot. As you can see, they're still quite fragile. Quite a lot of buttery looking fat sitting on top. And they're breaking up a little bit, so I just want to do it nice and gently. I don't want to break them up too much because we want to, if we break them up too much, uh, the fat will start seeping out of the curd. So we'll just stir them a little bit and what you'll notice is that there'll be, uh, the curds will start releasing whey. And I'd say after, I don't know, after about 10 minutes of stirring, you'll notice that there's a quite, quite a lot more whey coming out. And the curds, as they release whey, will start to plump up like little pillows, like little ravioli. And you can already see that there's more whey, that the whey is being released. As you can probably see, we've got a lot more whey. Um, we've still got a lot of curd, but a lot more whey is appearing and those curds, yeah, we have plump little curds. So milk is about 80% water. So we're just releasing some of the excess water. We want to keep some of it in the curd so that they're not still nice and soft. But, you know, if you can imagine that we've got like the end result is going to be a piece of cheese, a nice round of cheese. We just want to re release as much of that now as possible. And in the process, that will change the pH level of the curd. We'll leave the, the curds to settle to the bottom of the pot for a few minutes, and then we'll start scooping off the whey into a bucket. We'll keep a litre of the whey uh, that will be used to wash the cheese in a few days. Okay, so I'm just gonna start, I'm scooping out the curds now into our cheese baskets. I think we'll get about four baby cheeses. <laughs> so you wanna fill the cheeses, the cheese baskets right up to the top if we can. Go. As you can see, the whey is draining out. But you can see as I scoop them out, they're already starting to mesh together. 
which is perfect. That's what we want. So we'll just wait, I don't know, for maybe 10 to 15 minutes. And then I'm going to turn the cheeses, so I'm going to pull them out of the basket, flip them over, and that will make sure it'll enable the cheeses to drain evenly so we don't end up with a big dip in the middle. And they'll continue to drain overnight. We'll turn them one more time, maybe twice more before we go. And then we'll leave them out overnight. We want them to dry out and continue draining. And then tomorrow I'll salt the cheese. It's 24 hours later and uh, we've taken the cheese out of the food safe where it's been sitting overnight and draining. Uh, it's also been drying out a, quite a bit. So now I'm just going to take the cheese out of these baskets and they'll continue to to dry on our racks here and I'm going to salt them. Uh, this is some sea salt that I've got here in my container. I'm going to use maybe about a teaspoon per cheese. So I'll scatter it over the salt over the top and then I'm going to give it a good rub in. Just massage that salt in just covering the surface. And then once I've done this top side and the edges as much as possible, I'll flip them over and do the other side. I should also add, as well as that rind development, that what the salt does is it will attract the microflora that is in the cellar to the cheese. Um, and that is what will help develop the beautiful aroma uh, and flavor of the cheese as well. Uh, so this is the leftover whey from yesterday's cheese making. I'm gonna use the whey as a, as a brine to wash the cheese, uh, but it needs to be salted as well so I'm adding about a tablespoon of salt per litre of whey. And I'll just give that a good stir. When I'm washing the cheese, it will help kind of any, kill off any bad bacteria that we don't want. And it will help develop all the bacteria that we do want, especially the Brevi bacterium linens, which is the good stinky stuff. And I think hopefully in a week, we should start to see that rind developing on the cheese and the, the color will change as well. Hopefully a nice peachy pink is what I'm looking for. I'll leave the, the cheese, all the cheese in the, in the larder, well, in the food safe in the larder for probably around the next 24 hours. And then some of them I will move down into the cellars to mature. And we'll just observe uh, the differences in the, in the rinds and the, um, yeah, the development of the cheese. Uh, it's been about a week and a half since I made this batch of cheese, uh, but we now have three batches of cheese in the cellar. We actually have one here in the larder and two in the cellar. This is the first batch, uh, batch number one, Da Funk. <laughs> here we go. Woo! So let me pull out one. Smelling quite funky, which is really good. Just on the almost that beautiful washed rind stink or funk. As you can see, it looks a lot different to when I first made it. They were more white in color and the cheese is now forming a rind, which is the yellow. Um, so that's all the beautiful fat in the cheese. And so you can see there's this white mold, which is a good mold, um, geotrichum. 
And then on the top here, you may notice just in here that distinct washed rind kind of peachy pink colour coming out. And that's what I'm looking for. Uh, so today I am uh, washing the cheese. I've been washing the cheese every second day uh, since they were salted. So I've made a, a salt brine with water, water and about a litre of water, 50 grams of salt. And I've just put a little in a takeaway container here. Just wipe the cheese down with a bit of the brine. Not too much. We don't want it to be overly wet. This will just stop any unwanted mould growing on. Any bad mould, I guess. So I'm keeping two batches down here in the cellar and one upstairs in the food safe uh, in the larder just for a, a point of difference to see um, at the, well, the end result what the difference in the cheese will be if there's anything different that grows on the rind of the cheese or if it tastes differently. I'm already seeing it now in um, just a little difference, you know, in a bit of white mold growing, and, but it's too early to tell. It's been two and a half weeks, feels longer for some reason, uh, but here we have all three batches, batch number one, uh, the smaller cheeses, batch number two and batch number three just here, all quite different. Um, these ones have, uh, they're a little bit firm compared to batch number three. Uh, I think because we're keeping them here in the larder, it's a lot warmer, not much humidity. Uh, they've dried out quite a lot few cracks as well on part of the rind. I'm not worried, I will still eat them. Um, but just interesting to note the difference. Also, very funky on the nose, musty. Uh, you can see th there's a bit of pink. Yeah, they're fine, they're going well. They'll just be a completely different cheese to batch three, which made kind of a similar way, just the difference is kefir culture, commercial starter. This is it, this is the magic. This is what we were, this is what we wanted. This is like the whole point of this exercise is to see different environments and a just slightly different process in making the cheese.